<laughs> you're lurking because you don't want to fry your brain. I understand. I understand. I completely understand. Um, hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to my classroom. We're actually going to be learning physics today. So... More physics. Uh, leading into quantum mechanics. So again, we're still a long ways before we can get into QM and everything else. So let me move. Okay, that was a little better. So, <laughs> hey Mochi, hey Kuzo, hey Lapin, hey Mafi, hey Yuka. Welcome everybody. Um, I know Lily's here too. Hi Lily. Love you Lily. No. <laughs> um, my hands are all sorts of freaking out. Let's move you back. There? Will that work a little bit better? A little bit, maybe? Yeah, I suppose. Okay, that'll, it'll have to do. Ooh, here we go. Let's do this. I think my tracker got kind of awesome. There we go. Okay, this is a little bit better. <laughs> Let's do all the modes. I love those. Um. Welcome, welcome. Uh, we're going to be starting with, uh, so we're going to be picking up where we last left off with um, more talk about energy. Um, and <laughs> I'm kind of debating if we want to go all the way back to like very, very beginning, like physics 101 kind of stuff and start building from there. That is a lot of <laughs> uh, so many emotes that the actual like the actual overlay itself is lagging. <laughs> uh, uh, so yeah. Um, we're going to cover a bit more about about energy, probably pump potentials. Nah, you didn't break it. It just lagged out a little bit and it went. <laughs> uh, we're going we're gonna to finish energy a little bit, talk about um, uh, gravitational potential energy. Uh, we're going to talk about conservation of energy, and we're going to talk about thermal energies. Um, <clears throat> and once we get into that, we're going to talk about power, what, what power in physics means. Um, because the majority of the time you're looking at, like, the definitions of stuff, the definitions of how phys how science and physics, um, or the definitions of words as physics, science and physics understands them is different than what general, the general population kind of has going for them, you know? Um, right. I don't want to be looking there, maybe, maybe, we'll do that, that's fine, whatever. <laughs> anyway, uh, we're going to be talking about, uh, where is it, where was I at, let's go to, that's the wall, we want gravitational. I have some teaching aids here that help, help guide me in my instruction, so. <laughs> um, I don't expect this to go to more than like an hour, hour and a half, maybe two hours, if... Um, um, depending on how quickly we go through it. Um, also, Anyone on the YouTube side or on the, the Twitch side, feel free to ask questions. Especially if you may not understand something, I'm able to take it back. We go to like an earlier, a little a more simpler, more simpler time, which I'm kind of thinking I'll probably just start doing on Friday. Friday, we're gonna we're gonna start over with like the kinematics and the, the physics of motion. Um, <clears throat> energy it will will become a part of that. 
um, as we go forward. Um, but you need to know, we need to know the kinematics. We need to know the energy equations. And then once you get that, you can kind of, and you have to know at least a decent amount of math. Specifically, um, uh, various like, forms of calculus and the like. Um, what happened to Sen? What? I'm here. What happened to me? Is, did, did something happen to me that I'm not aware of? <laughs> what did happen to me? All the things are happening. I don't get it. <laughs> um. So yeah. Model laggy? Uh, oh, wait, maybe. Couldn't be. Not laggy on my end. I don't know, it might have just been, been a hiccup. Um, <clears throat> Hydro did drop a whole ton of emotes in an emote rain, so it is what it is. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so, uh, what did we go over last time? Last time we went over kinetic energy. Um, we went over energy and work, kinetic energy, which is the energy of motion. And how you know how we have these relationships between um, the different aspects of the equation. So it's like one half mv squared, so one half the mass times your velocity squared. Therefore, the energy that is being transferred every time you double your speed quadruples uh, quadruples the energy and the work output that you can have um, in a particular system. So, like the, an example of a car wreck, and then our example of me me being picked up full Nelson and railed. Um, we did the math for how much energy that would take. It's all estimates, um, there, because there's a whole ton of, ton of situations in each of the, um, scenarios that we didn't include, um, because we didn't take, take into account drag forces, uh, friction, because that's another source of energy where it gets transferred, uh, to and from, um, generally heat. So I mean that's why when you when you're when you're having when you're having the sexy times, everything gets really warm, is because you are you're generating heat with friction. <coughs> also, that's why you should use lube, lots and lots of lube. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna kick things off. Boom. Um, ooh, my screen's also fucked, isn't it? Let me see here. Um, screen. Make that bigger. Go. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So we we, we worked with um, kinetic energy. So that's just when stuff is moving. Um, there is also a level, of, I think, called gravitational potential energy. <coughs> uh, we know that um, when you lift a heavy weight above your head, it's a dangerous situation. However, there's Okay, 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 okay. Makes perfect sense, right? Makes perfect sense. Absolutely perfect sense. I have so many things all over the place. What is going on with... Ooh. Oh, shit. We're having... There is not just lag. Okay. What is going on here? That's fine. That's fine. Okay, okay, so I think we had a hiccup with OBS deciding it wanted to be stupid. Um, so let's give it a minute. Da, 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 da. Okay. <laughs> Stop killing me! Ah! 
Ah, okay, so back to what I was saying. I don't know what we missed, but I'm gonna go back over it. So the formula for gravitational, uh, oh yeah, the, the stream restarted, woo. Uh, buffering, okay, that's fine. What do we got? We're dropping frames. This is not good. Something's not going on. No good right here. Mm. All right, so we're just gonna talk and maybe things will actually stabilize because it looks like they're actually starting to stabilize. Oh, hydration, thank you, love. Ah, get some water in me. I'm just gonna keep an eye on the the frames for the moment, and we'll just keep let's we'll keep talking a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> ah, looks like everything is good. Okay, wouldn't be a stream if there was no scuff, you know. <laughs> There's always gonna be scuff. Let me move the mic a little bit away so that I can. So I have a little bit more room to, to write and shit. Okay, so. <clears throat> oh geez, we're still dropping frames. Holy crap, what's going on with OBS? Is OBS being shitty today? I don't know. Yeah, is this being shit? It's being shitty across the board. I wonder if anybody else is experiencing it too. Hmm. <clears throat> Yeah, we're dropping frames again. All right. I'm just trying to wait for it to get steady. It's like, I want, I want it to be sitting at a, at a good six Mbps. No, my CPU should be fine. Yeah, I'm, I'm not even 20% on my CPU. 25% on my, my RAM, so. <clears throat> mm hmm, okay. Let me give it a couple more minutes, and then if we, if the stream, if, if OBS doesn't fuck it, fucking fix itself up, here soon, we're going to, uh, we'll probably end stream and do this another day, because it just seems like everything's fucking up pretty bad, but we'll see. Stop! My cat just decides she wants to sit behind me and yell, even if I give her pets, anything. Uh, if I play with her, she'll just sit there and yell. Meow, 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 meow. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right, hold on. Okay. Uh. All right, so just keep an eye on our bit rate briefly before we really, really dive in again. Da, 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 da. All right. Every time I'm saying we look stable, it's because we look stable. I think the eclipse is supposed to have tech out. I don't think there's something else. Uh, solar flares can. Um, I don't know if. I don't know if. A, I don't think an eclipse can. I'm not anywhere near it, so it shouldn't really be causing any issues, even if it could. Um, I know solar flares can, unless you have sufficient shielding on the object, and if the solar flare is powerful enough. But if it's powerful enough to affect technology on, on the planet. It's just extremely dangerous already, so. Yeah. <clears throat> you know. Six of one thing, half dozen of another. No. All right. We're looking stable. Things look pretty okay right now. So, let's get back into it. <laughs> and let's move the mic a little bit. Um, potential energy. Um, is indicated in science with U sub G. So it's potential 
Um, it's the gravitational, which is what the G stands for, uh, potential energy, which is equal to, to the force at force with relation to gravity here times the height, which is force, as we know, equals mass times acceleration and gravity is an acceleration. So we get mass times gravity times the height. MGH, this is our equation for gravitational potential energy. Real simple, super easy to work with. Um, <clears throat> the the interesting thing about this particular this particular portion here um, is gravitational pot potential energy is that the zero your zero point wherever your h of zero is is completely arbitrary. You can just choose a point. So say you're over here pulling a rope that goes over a, a pulley here with um, some kind of weight on it. And this is the floor. You could have set the floor is your h equals zero, or you could actually set, say here, as h equals zero, or it could be up here as h equals zero. <clears throat> um, which means you do get negative energies, especially if you start where the box is raised and then drop it, because this is h equals zero and it is going down, which means it's moving in the negative direction. So. Down is usually always considered negative. Up is generally always considered positive. It's arbitrary, and honestly, you could just decide that down in this in this case is positive. You could. You would just have to state that. Um, which is kind of how you work with physics. You'd be like, okay, here's what I'm working. Here's what we're working with. Let me lift this up. I get the microphone up there. There we go. That should be. Better. <laughs> And this can give you this can give you negative uh, negative um, negative energies. Basically, is what's happening. <clears throat> but then, if you take in, take into account the entire system of what's going on here, um, you did have to lift this up unless someone else did that, and you're just here holding it. And we talked about work last time. So if you just take into account this system here with the person and the rope they're holding onto, there is work being done inside of the body, but not on the rope. So inside your body, there is tension in the muscles, they're flexing, they're straining, there's chemical reactions going on, um, and there is work being done. <clears throat> but the person, and the, is there any per work between the, the person and the rope? No, no, there is not. Because it's just, it's, it's not doing anything. Work has to do something to move something that's that's the key the key part of it um so honestly gravitational potential energy is like one of the most simple um versions of energy um and you can use it to you just calculate like what how much energy it takes or how much electrical energy it would take uh, because everything is measured in joules. So keep in mind, even this this energy right here, the potential energy, is measured in joules. <clears throat> which you which is a form of a, you can electrical energy can be measured in joules. So if you lift something up like here, and you have something uh, in this case, uh, you have this motor here, and it's running this pulley here. So we have this nice thing here. And we have a car here, cart, and it's going to go off the screen. Let me move it. Uh, we have a little, this is your elevator. Boom! And you're over here standing in your happy little elevator. You can't really see that right now. Let's move that up a little bit more. There we go. Okay. In your happy little elevator, this is your motor, your counterweight. And this is your elevator system. Um, then 
you need to find out how much energy is used to lift to go up to the top floor. Say you're on the first floor and you want to go to floor two. And it's 50 meters up. You can figure out how much and how much energy this engine or this motor needs to exert to be able to lift whatever this weight is. Um, and this, the assumption here is we're making the elevator is basically um, is is weightless. There's a lot of assumptions like that in physics. We're like, oh yeah, ignore the mass of the elevator. We only care about this particular thing, as an example. But <coughs> there's a lot of that. <laughs> Or um, you have some odd object and you just need to describe it as a uh, flat sphere. Yeah, for it, it's a flat sphere. Just there you go. We're gonna assume this 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 non-geometric flat wavy plane thing is a sphere. And we'll calculate stuff off of that. I've seen that so many times. Anyway, <clears throat> so this particular thing is you know this distance it's got to go to. You know it's got to go, so your H equals 50 meters. Cool, that's cool. Um, say this person here is 75 kilograms, so we know the mass is 75 kilograms, and we know G is 9.8 meters per second squared. <laughs> Let's multiply all that together. Boom, you have your potential energy. <coughs> but then, like we were talking about with work, before. So if we do, uh, so if you have this information, we have u sub g equals, it's uh, da, 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 75 kilograms times 9.8 squared times uh, 50 meters. Whatever that equals, doesn't really matter. Um, it equals a number. I don't have my calculator open. <clears throat> and I don't want to do quick math in my head. Unless we just automatically assume, unless we just assume that gravity is 10, which we could, in theory, do, but I'm not going to. Um, so this is, this is some kind of number, and this is equal to the work done by gravity. The work done by gravity in joules. <clears throat> and if, say, the motor is only 25% efficient, um, which means you're only getting 25% of the energy out, you need to multiply this by 4. So you have to multiply this by 4 to get uh, total energy, T sub E, or E sub T. Probably the better option, E sub T, total energy uh, necessary for the system. There you go. <clears throat> if it's, that's if you presume that this is that right here is what it actually exerts. This, this is what it needs to use, however, it doesn't necessarily do that. It needs to do this bigger number that's over here, which is just basically a scribble at this point, but you know, whatever, you get the point. <laughs> okay. That's potential energy. Um, questions, comments, concerns, emotional outbursts of any kind. Um, do please let me know, and it looks like the stream is going fucky. Mm, we've been dropping frames even more during this time, that's no good. Um, well, fuck. I wonder if the, the eclipse is actually doing something like that, and it's causing issues. Huh. I mean, it's entirely possible. Hey, Goonie. Uh, you're just in time for whether or not we're going to decide if we're going to continue or not because um, OBS is being shitty and dropping frames and bitrate is dropping and not being stable and I'm curious if it's <clears throat> if it's just um, if it's the eclipse that's causing problems which it very well could be uh, whatever, we're gonna keep going. We're gonna keep going for the VOD crew. So if you're here watching from the VOD, thank you very much. Consider liking and subscribing um, on Twitch and on YouTube. Hey, hey Loki. Um, consider watching my playlist. Every single one of my smash that like button, ring that notification bell, 
never miss a live stream slash whatever the hell I decide I'm gonna do in the future. <laughs> I haven't figured that part yet. We're work I'm working on that. I kind of want to do um, maybe little educational snippets, maybe of some kind, in shorts. Uh, we'll see. I don't know. I don't know. <clears throat> um, okay. So it looks like we're getting a little bit more stable. That's fine. So gravitational portent potential energy um, is. <clears throat> so the thing with uh, the thing with gravitational potential energy, um, I haven't seen eclipse. I'm not near it. I've seen eclipses before. I'm, I, it's not really a huge deal to me, in all honesty. Everyone's freaking out because of what I'm like. I've seen three in my lifetime already. So, <laughs> um, <clears throat> gravitational potential energy, we assume is uniform across all of the, the earth. It's 9.8 meters per second squared. That is not necessarily true even on earth. At higher elevations, you're gonna have a lower gravitational force. It's a minuscule difference, like you're talking, instead of like 9.8 meters per second squared, it's 9.7999999999999 meters per second squared. Negligible differences, okay, negligible. But as you start talking about like larger and larger distances like between two objects, you want to kind of try to figure out what the gravitational pull between those objects is. Um, and to do that, you cannot presume that the gravitational field is uniform. So, which should make logical sense, <clears throat> um, that the gravitational pull between you and the Earth is 9.8 meters per second squared. However, the gravitational pull between you and Jupiter is not the same. <clears throat> now, it's really, really interesting to actually calculate that stuff. So we can figure out what that is with our fancy, um, uh, it's called Newton's Law of Gravitation. Um, and it's the attractive force between two objects of, of di different masses. You could use this, you could definitely use this to calculate the actual gravitational force that Yo Mama exerts on everything around her. <laughs> so you want the force, and that's going to be equal to big G, which is a gravitational constant, um, <clears throat> which we'll get to. Um, we're just going over the equation right now. Do they tell us what that one is? Let me look it up real quick. Let me look up what the gravitational constant is. Well, we'll get to that one. Okay, so it's big G, which is the gravitational constant, times M1 times M2 divided by what is the radius squared? Yeah, it's right there. The radius squared. <clears throat> and the radius is just... Um, R is not the radius. Uh, unfortunately, it's... They decided R was going to be the, the instrument. But it's the distance between the two objects and their centers of mass. So in this case, we'd be trying to figure out um, the distance between yourself and your mama's center of mass. So apparently they're doing, do they accelerate certain, ooh! I mean, that makes sense. I mean, during eclipses, you wanna, you wanna have, have experiments going. Oh no, it's like you don't have power again, Lily. <laughs> um, so, this is our equation here. F equals big G M1 M2 over R squared, okay? Um, Specifically, M1 is the mass of object one. M2 is all the same thing. Two, R is the distance. Distance between. And G is the gravitational. Constant. God, my handwriting is so terrible. 
Um, so G in this case is equal to, da, 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 da. and this is not something that everybody really, really needs to know because you just look this up, okay? Because it's uh, 6.7, 7, 4, 3, 0, 1, 5 times 10 to the minus 11th meters cubed kilogram, um, kilograms, there. Let me write this in a, let me write these. In a better, easier way. So it's meters cubed over kilogram seconds squared. That is the gravitational constant. <clears throat> Six point six seven four three zero one five times ten to the minus eleventh meters cubed uh, per kilogram second squared. Uh, people are gonna freak out about black holes when anytime CERN does anything. They were concerned about it when the when the particle accelerator first started up, and they're morons. Because here. In physics and in quantum physics. Microscopic black holes form and dissipate all the time, everywhere. They're not big enough to do anything ever, and they they, they just can't, and they can't get any bigger. But they just whoop, whoop, they just pop in and out. They're just like they're 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 there and they're gone. So, based on this equation here, let's slide that a little, a little bit, so it's a little bit better. Based on this equation here, we can see that as the distance between two objects increases, the actual force decreases by a power of two. Like, it, it, it drops real fast. And as you get, as the distances get larger and larger and larger, say like between Earth and gravity, the gravitational force pull between the two is basically zero. <clears throat> um, so, that's something to keep in mind when you're talking about gravitational potential gra gravitational force between two objects. Um, <clears throat> Um, now if we're talking about, like, work being done by gravitational force, this, this equation right here changes a little bit, you know, um, because we end up with u of g with relation to the distance, so, um, the potential with respect to, r, uh, to distance is equal to big G m1 m2 r because it's over a distance and if you remember gravitational potential is by height so height is a distance divided by r squared and in this way in this case the distance is always negative so this is just a, a, a matter of course for this in which case this r and the squared cancels so we get u of g so R is equal to negative G M1. If I could write properly here. M1 M2 over R. <clears throat> and this would be equal to the work. Y'all can't see that. There we go. Let's move this. <laughs> and that's equal to the work that's being done by the gravitational by gravitational forces between two objects. <clears throat> and you can, you can calculate the gravitational force between two, two people. Um, and in this case, we just wanted to do that, like, um, we'll take me, I'll start with me. Uh, let me find out what, what the, the, the eclipse will give people superpowers? God damn, people will be like anything. 
149 pounds, 2 kilograms. I am... So if we go... I am 67 kilograms. <clears throat> so if someone wants to give me their... Their weight in kilograms, or, you know, well, pounds doesn't really matter. Um... We'll just assume someone of 75. Cool. So 75 kilograms times big G divided by the distance between you. Um, so in this case, we can say, well, and it's in meters. <clears throat> so what we can do is we will do. Da, 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 things. Five. Okay, so this is five thousand twenty-five kilograms squared G divided by and we'll say the distance from is 1,275 kilometers. <clears throat> That's a 5. 5025. Let's actually go to another screen. Okay. <clears throat> there you go. So we have 5,025 kilograms squared times G divided by 1,275 kilometers. Or, in this case, uh, we would have 000, 0 1.275 million meters, which is kind of what we want. We want it in meters. <coughs> yeah, the eclipse is cool. Eclipses are always pretty cool, you know? We'll talk about rotations here in a minute, too. Oh, maybe we'll get into that. Maybe we'll get into that. Who knows? Um, now, we're going to remember what G is equal to. That was the 6.67 times 10 to the minus 11th. So, it's really tiny. This is a super small number. It's literally... It's, Seven, eight, nine, ten, six, seven. Yeah. That is that number right there. Really, really small. <clears throat> and then that's going to be times 50, 25. Then it's going to be divided by 1.275 uh, million meters. So if we do 0.1234567867 times 5025, we end up with how many is that vacuum? One, two, three, four, five, six. So we end up with 3.37 times 10 to the minus six. Divided by 1.275 times 10 to the minus third meters. And then this ends up being, um, I will get the units of the So it's kilograms square, uh, squared uh, meters cubed over kilogram second square. So you can see we're going to have a whole bunch of units that cancel out. Presumably the meters, this becomes a square, this square goes away, and that goes away. So our units are going to be kilograms, kilogram meters squared 
or second squares. Which, we remember from, from the last time, is the definition of a jewel. Look at that. It worked out. <laughs> um, then we just have to divide it by these. We have to divide it by this number. Um, which means it's going to be even smaller. It's going to be times 10 to the minus ninth. Um, <clears throat> and then this is basically 2. 2 times 10 to the minus 9. This is the force of gravity between myself and someone in Dallas who weighs 75 kilograms. I would point that out. This is a super tiny, tiny number. It's essentially zero, but it is there. And it is, sometimes it's something you have to take into account. So, um, no. Gravitational potential energy, pretty simple. Well, relatively simple anyway. Uh, it can get more complicated when you start talking about like the gravitational effect of like um, more than two bodies because we we've solved the two body problem so it's like two two masses floating around and moving and moving in space and affecting each other gravitationally <laughs> as far as i'm aware we have not solved the three body problem so if you have three bodies floating and moving around each other in space it gets complicated very fast. Um, to kind of put that into into perspective, the equation that we we just we're just working with the F equals G M one M two over R squared. So the forces between two objects. You now have to take into account um, the force between M two and M three and R squared, and M1 and M3 over R squared. So now you have three equations to deal with between all of the, 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 the different bodies uh, that are you know, in a system. And you gotta figure out how these are all related to each other and come up with, they're all equal to F, so they're all basically equal to each other. Um, well, this would be F1, F2, F3. Um, yeah, this gets complicated. <clears throat> okay. <laughs> Next thing we gotta we have to know we have to go over is the conservation of energy. It's it uh, it's, it's, it's conservation of energy just means the energy doesn't the energy in a system doesn't change. Um. So when you're doing, when you're calculating the energies of a particular, like someone, someone throwing a ball to someone over here, this is the energy system right here that we want to, we're concerned with. The energy of this system, no matter what is going on, does not change. The energy changes forms, like. As they're throwing the ball back and forth, and they're you know running to get it, they are they're exerting energy and they're giving off heat as thermal energy. Their bodies are heating up. There's kinetic energy with the ball going over here. There's potential energy with the ball going up. <clears throat> so we have um, the total forces in here. Our energy is equal to our kinetic energy plus our potential energy plus our thermal energy. You have to take into account thermals, uh, which you always have to take into account, at least for larger systems and such. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the conservation of energy sh um, should be a fairly straightforward concept, in all honesty. Um, no matter what way the energy changes shape or form, it is still energy and it is still it is still taken into account and it has to equal what went in. So if you put 20 joules into a system, 
the system is not going to just lose 20 joules unless it leaves the system somehow. Um, and most of the time when you're doing calculations, you don't concern yourself with the energy escaping per se. You're concerned about what energy is currently in the system and how it's changing forms. Um, it gets a little more complicated when you're starting to talk about like how it transforms, where it's moving to, what it's, where it's going, um, especially in chemical reactions and stuff like that. Titration. I don't want to get into chemistry. I hated chemistry. Ugh, chemistry. Ew. But it's necessary. Okay. Uh, let's see if there's anything in here about more about the conservation of energy. Like my the stream has been the stream has been relatively stable, but it's been dropping back and forth. So we're probably not going to be going much longer. Thank Scooney. Um, so some of the energies you will in likely encounter in various systems are going to be kinetic energy, gravitational potential, um, elastic spring potential, and heat or thermal energy. Um, <laughs> no, we're not seeing anything here. We're way outside of the range, Mochi. <laughs> Um, so as I pointed up here, those three there, we end up with, um, the energy of the kinetic plus gravitational plus spring potential, which is equal to our AF plus UG final plus U spring final plus E final. <clears throat> Um, so we get a whole bunch of different energies that are coming up here, which when expanded, yeah, I know we don't get to see that. We don't get to see the eclipse. It sucks. You know, whatever. We'll see the next one. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> Move to Indiana. That's, that's where it went through. Ooh, yawning. Mm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um... So what, what this expands out into is our kinetic energy, which was one half mv squared, which is our initial, so the velocity of our initial kinetic, plus our mgh initial, plus our one half. Okay, so this one we didn't talk about. This is like spring constant. This is like for springs and um, spring energy, which is k which is your spring constant and every spring has a constant that it works with um and then we have the distance that the spring expands over um which is very similar as you can say to kinetic energy and that's our initial for that which is equal to our kinetic energy at the final plus our gravitational potential final plus our spring potential final plus the final heat. See there a little bit. I know it's a little garbage to go through at the end, but I ran out of space. Um, that's your equation for energy at a basic mechanics level right there. Um, most of this stuff you just, you can know. Um, you can know your velocity, you know your mass, your mass, the gravi uh, gravitational pull, the height you move. You can look up the spring constants for various materials um, and the distance over which that, um, that spring um, extends and contracts, goes back and forth. And as you can see, since it's squared, it doesn't matter if it's pushed in or it's pulled apart. That doesn't matter because the square makes it a positive regardless. Uh, and then the finals are just the versions of those, and the one that we that ends up being added on is the heat. <clears throat> is your thermal energy right here? Um, so you're going to lose energy in these these other three here. These three will convert into heat. 
which is why you get a whole bunch of like that's why you need an exhaust um, and radiator in your car and in your home um, it has to, or your refrigerator has has one of these too and why it is so hot near them is because it's the it's the waste energy or it's the um, it's the leftover energy that is not being used as fuel in that engine system but your engine gets hot and why you have to cool it down to keep it running it's, only, it's not very efficient none of our engines are very efficient um, comparatively anyway and I think there is, if I remember correctly, there is an upper, there's an upper limit to f being physically efficient with an engine. I want to say it's something like 70% or something like that. It's something, it's, it's, it's not that bad, but it, it, it's pretty bad. Because that's a lot of energy that's being converted into just waste heat. Now, if we could convert that heat into something else, maybe, maybe we'd be onto something. Who knows? I'll bring this back over. There we go. Okay. Um. So when when we were talking about like a system of of objects, what I mean is it's it's literally just a collection of objects that we choose to model with whatever equations we have available to us. Because you can't you can't include everything in your model, whatever you're trying to, to work in your system. It would just get way too complex, and at, once you hit a, once you hit like a certain number of objects, which is usually about three or four, there's no way you're gonna calculate anything out of, anything of value out of it in any reasonable amount of time. So you wanna kinda just limit what, how many interactions you're dealing with in the system. You know? So, like, an example, like, one of the things that you want to do... One of the things that you want to do when you're, um, when you're looking at a system, and you can apply this to basically anything in life, too, is say, a bungee jumper. So we've got... We got our bungee jumper. Woo! <clears throat> what are the things that are affecting uh, the bungee jumper? Uh, Earth. Earth gravity. Okay, we gotta keep that in mind. Uh, the other thing is uh, the bungee itself. So we know these are the three minimum things we basically need. However, if you're moving through the air, You have to you have to take into account drag. <clears throat> now at this point, there's other things we could probably take into account here, like a harness here, air. If there's any wind, <clears throat> which brings us into just various weather systems, the Earth. Uh, if we're taking into account the Earth. We can bring in tidal forces here, and then why, why would we stop there? We'll just go with the sun, <clears throat> and then over here, so they're on. Say they're on a bridge, which uh, has to do with the deformation of the bridge due to the due to the bungee jumper being on it, and it's oh, say it's in a mountain. So you can take into account the mountains. So you can you see as you go, the, the system gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So you want to constrain yourself to say this, or you can include the bungee as well. So this is the system that you would be, you'd be calculating or working with. Okay. And you can kind of apply this. This can be applied to non-physics things too. This is just a thought map, basically. Um, so if you're good, you're you know, little thought maps and and the like, you can figure out what's connected to what, um, how things are related, all that fun stuff. 
Uh, all right, it looks like we're dropping frames again. Okay, cool. So it's been about an hour. Um, I keep dropping frames. Um, internet's being shitty right now, so I'm going to go ahead and we're going to end stream. I'm not going to raid in anybody right now. We got another stream later this evening. And we'll see how the net, how OBS and the servers are working then. <clears throat> um, and next time, I think we're going to go back and we're going to talk about kinematics again. The, mo uh, the physics of actual motion, not the energy of that will come in and they'll actually tie together at, um, at some point. Once we have all those, that's when we're going to start di dipping into quantum mechanics and we'll start talking about it. We have to dig, dip into e more about energy, electrons, atomic structures, and the like. And there's going to be a lot to it. So for now, we're going to end because I keep fucking dropping frames, bit rates dropping like crazy, and I don't want to go too much longer and have a terrible, terrible time. So. I hope everyone enjoyed the short stream. We'll be back later tonight with BG3, unless something comes up. I don't expect anything to come up. Um, with Lily, Kami, and Lapin. That's gonna be in about, about four-ish hours. We'll see. Uh, the waiting room over on YouTube is up for, for my side of things already. So if anyone wants to pop into there, just kind of hang out, that'd be cool. Um, but yeah, so I'll see y'all then, and yeah, have a good rest of your day. Look forward to more um, physics. Let's let's do a quick. You couldn't see the mountains over there or the other things here. Yeah, so this system got pretty big pretty quick. So okay, all right, everybody, take care. I'll see y'all later today. Um, I'm actually a little tired too, so I'm probably gonna take a little short nap or just lay down for a little bit. <laughs> hey Selena, <laughs> thank you for coming in. Um, but yeah, so I will we'll catch you all later for the chaos of, of BG3. And yeah, everyone have a good day. Catch y'all later. Bye.